Hey guys, let's talk about autopilot in the hip. So the hip does have an autopilot system. It isn't crazy sophisticated. It's more of a an attitude, heading, and altitude hold system, similar to what you would find in the Tomcat, but it's effective, and it will do a great job in reducing pilot workload, allowing you to take your hands off the controls, especially on some of those longer flights, which are pretty common for cargo helicopters and troop transport helicopters, kind of like this one. So the autopilot panel is in the center. It's in the flight engineer's seat, which you can reach by hitting three on your keyboard. And if we look straight down from here, it's broken into two categories, two sections. So the first is this readout here, which is telling us what the autopilot is doing at any given time. This is repeated onto the controls indicator in the top right screen, uh, which is right control and enter. But these are four different um, the four different inputs that you have as a pilot, which the autopilot can manage for you, or at least partially. So this is yaw, this is your anti-torque pedal, this is roll, this is the body roll left and right, pitch, nose up and down, and altitude, collective setting. They're controlled by three on-off controls, so yaw can be turned on independently, this is your heading hold. Roll and pitch are combined into an attitude hold. Uh, this is useful for things like either maintaining forward level flight or trying to stay in a reasonable hover or in a, an orbit. And then altitude can also be turned on and off independently. There's no button for attitude to turn it off, you just have to turn off the entire system. So there is a binding, if you look it up, called Turn Off Autopilot, which you can bind. You can also turn off the circuit breakers if you just want to disable the system entirely, and you'll find those in bank 7 of the, of the circuit breaker panel above. Head. I'll show you that in a minute. Finally, you have some controls. These are used to fine-tune. You can see I've already fine-tuned the roll a little bit here, but you can dial these to adjust your current heading. So if I find that I'm actually, I need to go a little bit to the right, I can turn this dial and the helicopter is going to change its angle here. Maybe I can see that. If I do a little more, the helicopter is going to start turning to the right. And then if I bring that back and level out, I can adjust my heading without touching my physical controls just by adjusting the heading hold. And you can see it will apply more right anti-torque pedal as I do that, and then bring it back here so on this little readout here or at the top right. Same thing if I go the other direction. If I go left, it's going to reduce that amount of right anti-torque pedal, and the helicopter is going to start to turn to the left. So you have the same thing for roll and pitch. So if I want to change my bank angle, I can do that. If I want to change my pitch up or down and climb, I can do that. And then I have a switch that goes up and down here for the altitude adjustment. So if I want to change my altitude above the ground, I can do that. So I mentioned disabling the system entirely. That's in this circuit breaker panel right up here. And in bank seven, so one, two, three, four, five, six, bank seven. The first three switches here are autopilot. You can turn those off and disable the entire system, or like I mentioned, just bind the turn off autopilot button. So that's it for controlling it. And this whole time I've been flying completely hands off. We've been maintaining basically no climb or descent rate. We're at a heading of about 040 and we're maintaining 270 kilometers per hour, and I'm not touching anything. So this is great for those really long flights when you have a long straight line to go, and not much is going on. You don't have to worry about constantly holding your helicopter at an altitude. So when you're ready, you can turn things off. So you can turn off your altitude. Now the helicopter is gonna wanna pitch up or pitch down and climb on its own. You have to adjust your collective yourself. This is good when you're coming in to descend, so let's say we're headed into that airfield just down there, off the nose. So we can manage that, but the helicopter's still going to manage our heading hold for us, and it's going to help with our attitude so that we can keep a nice stable dive. Now if we want to turn off the yaw hold, now it's on us to turn the nose as needed, which, you know, we're going to keep that on because it's really nice, keeps us pointed where we want to be. And then we could also turn off the entire system. 
And then it's on us now to manage everything. And already you can see that it's a lot wobblier, it's not as stable. And it really is to your benefit as the pilot to reduce your workload and turn these things on. So we're gonna come in for a landing down here and we'll do a little bit of hovering and we'll look at the differences between um, the autopilot on and off, the different modes, and talk about how it's helping you, what it's doing. Okay, so we're on the ground at the airfield and we're gonna do a little bit of hovering with the autopilot currently off and we're gonna look at how stable or not stable it is and how long it takes me to get into a reasonably stable hover without the help from the autopilot. So like we talked about in the hover video, a little bit of aft and right cyclic, and then we just power up or cyclic um, collective up words, and up we go. And you can see the nose will wobble a little bit left and right as I react to it and try to counter with anti-torque pedal. I'm gonna drift a little bit left and right, and I'm gonna have to roll the body or pitch the nose try to counter that and I'm always adjusting my collective to keep my altitude stable and it's a bit of a dance a bit of a game you can see top left corner my inputs are always moving trying to keep the helicopter give it this illusion of it being stable and I wouldn't dare take my hands off the controls because I would drift out of control in some direction or other very very quickly I'm making constant little changes to counteract what I see and to counteract what I predict will happen next. So I can get into a hover that, you know, I'm reasonably happy with, but you can see for yourself that the canopy frame is drifting around and shifting a little bit and it's not perfectly smooth. So then we can set back down again. Now this time I'm not going to touch my anti-torque pedals. I'm going to turn the yaw autopilot, the yaw hold on, and I'm going to leave my pedals alone. And I'm going to lift up again, same thing right now, cyclic. And you can already see in the indicator on the left there that it's applying some left anti-torque pedal for me. And as I lift up, going to change and apply right anti-torque pedal to counter the left twist from the torque of the engine and the transmission. And as I go up, I'm not touching my pedals, but that nose is rock solid pointed straight for that building over there, and it's not going anywhere. And it's one less thing for me to worry about. It helps me keep myself pointed directly into the wind if there is any. And now all I have to do is worry about my attitude, my pitch, my roll, and my altitude with my collective. So it's just one less thing. And that alone reduces my workload considerably. And already my, my hover looked a lot more stable even though it was just a heading hold that I was using. So if we set down again, break on because I don't have it trimmed. This time we turn on our attitude hold and we lift up. I'm not touching the pedals, and I'm going to make corrections for the movement I see, but then I don't have to do much after that. The oscillations that come with stopping movement in any direction in a helicopter will be cancelled out, mostly, or dampened anyways, by the autopilot. And you can see the pitch going up and down and up and down, and the roll indicator there going left and right and left and right, wobbling back and forth, countering what would otherwise be an oscillating motion that I would be responsible for uh, dampening myself with my inputs. So already I'm in a pretty stable hover here, and I haven't done much of anything. My inputs have been very, very mild and few and far between. So if I trim here, and I can let go, and like I said in the hover video, you'll probably never get to a point where you can go completely hands-off. You might, especially if you've been doing this for a while, or if you get lucky or whatever. Uh, I've managed it, you know, once or twice. But you'll get very, very close to the point where you're just doing little fingertip manipulations to your cyclic and not much else. And part of that will be how accurate your joystick is. Mine is a decent dead zone and some slop around the center. It's not as precise as I would like, so I think that contributes to it. But if I go hands-off now and hop out of here, 
I'm not moving much, you know? I'm drifting a little bit forward, and I can counter that with, like, little fingertip motions on my cyclic. And the autopilot keeps me pretty stable. There we go. I'm holding, like, the tiniest amount of back pressure here with a pinky finger on my cyclic. Now I'm drifting a bit to the left, and I can, you know, counter for that with just tiny, tiny, tiny inputs. And the autopilot counters out a lot of the oscillation that would otherwise be happening. So I should mention that this is in no way an auto hover like the Ka-50 has, but it can help a lot in stabilizing your hover when you're flying the hip. And then finally, there's the altitude hold, which isn't going to help us a lot in a hover, but we can turn it on and it will do its best to keep us at a stable altitude. But I find that this is something that you can find an equilibrium for with your physical collective reasonably easily, especially if you're using the yaw and attitude holds. You'll be able to manage that one yourself and go mostly hands off with it without needing an autopilot. So there we go, with the autopilot on, you can make these tiny little adjustments, get into a really nice stable hover where we're not wobbling around and we're not doing much for inputs, and that's kind of the goal. So now you can see on the readout panel of what it's doing, I'm applying a bunch of right anti-torque pedal for me here. It's rolling a bit to the right to counter translating tendency. It's pitching the nose up a little bit so that we don't drift forward, and the altitude uh, uh, is staying stable because I'm not climbing or sinking. So like I said, not exactly an auto hover like the COP50 has, but if you can get it trimmed well and use the autopilot, it's not far off. So that's that. That's the autopilot in the hip. I hope you'll find it useful. Um, it's intended for you to use the attitude hold, the middle one there, all the time during flight. And then you would turn on the yaw hold when you need it, and the altitude hold for forward level flight, typically, for longer journeys. That's about it. Again, like I said in the hover video, I would recommend that you try most things, learning most things without the autopilot first. And then turn it on after you've kind of gotten a feel for things and you feel like you're kind of okay doing things on your own. Turn on the autopilot and now you'll understand how it's helping you and why it's useful. Let me know if I missed anything, if I got something wrong. I'd love to hear about it below. And otherwise, I will see you guys for the next video. Thanks.